Okay, moving on to plumbing. So plumbing here, I like to normally start around the water heater. The water heater is not the only spot that you inspect for uh, the, how the water lines are performing, but it's a good start. You can kind of see the how the tank is installed, if the tank is compromised or not. And then also you get to see what type of pipes you have at the top. Whenever you have certain types of pipes, such as galvanized water lines, PEX water lines, copper water lines, you're able to identify them and then each one normally comes with different sets of issues. I need to make a whole new, another video on all the different issues that can come with each different type of water line. That's a good idea. I'll work on that next. Whenever we're looking at this tank here, you can kind of see that there is some rust colors and we have some water lines. So that does reference what we had in the past with the, the flue not being installed properly. But at the top here, you can kind of see overall it has not caused any major damage. We do have some dryer lint here, which is not very safe, but that is probably because the dryer flue goes right underneath and it might have been disconnected or something. We also have a little bit of corrosion here at the bottom, but I don't think this is gonna affect the performance. We just need to make sure that the tank is not compromised, which I'm not really think, I'm not seeing any soft spots or real significant weak spots. Uh, the biggest thing with this water heater is that the water lines have that discoloration and we wanna see if it's happening throughout the entire structure. So I'm gonna look underneath the sink here and I'm not seeing any major corrosion in these areas. So uh, let's move up to the attic and see if we see any corrosion around the pipes on the horizontal paths. Okay, so looking at the plumbing lines in the horizontal path, you can see how these look pretty good and normal. And then right at the joints or the fittings over here, you start to see that heavy corrosion. This could be either from porter solders, a microbial leak, or the electrolysis I'm talking about. So we are gonna recommend for a qualified licensed plumber to come in and further evaluate it and check it out. It's not just happening in one spot though. You can see it's happening in several locations and all the joints and fittings in the water lines. So with that being said, one of the major items right here that they definitely want to focus on when purchasing this property is the plumbing. Plumbing is no joke. Water causes the most damage in your properties and this is something that they definitely want to take action on. So a quick tip about walking through the attic space, you want to be very careful when walking through the attic space. You can see how loose and flimsy this piece of plywood is. So you, you want to pay attention to where you're stepping. So my rule is never look and move, plant your feet, then look, then watch where you move. So be very careful in not to step through the attic space. This will be a day ruiner and a reputation ruiner too. How are you a professional on stepping through ceilings? Okay, while we're in the attic space, let's go ahead and knock out the furnace and the coils up here. Uh, you can see that the furnace is obviously newer than 1970s and the coils look a little newer than 1970s too. Plus, all the ductwork looks hanged you got a little bit of sag there but you can see the ductwork's even been improved from the 1970s as well so let's uh, go ahead and look in the coils first you can see the coils are a little dirty so we'll recommend for uh, a clean you want to have them cleaned or a slight tune-up also one of the things that you want to pay attention to as well is you want to look at the tonnage of the structure uh, of the structure of the unit and then also check the types of freon a lot of HVAC technicians or the cheaper HVAC technicians, they will mismatch the units. Uh, you want to also pay attention to see if there's any air leaks around the unit and then uh, make sure that your secondary drain line is installed correctly. If the secondary drain line is not installed properly, there's a chance that the unit could fill up with water and split and cause a lot of damage. So right here, uh, you can, we recommend for that to have a 90 degree elbow down and terminate it out and make sure the pan is properly sloped out. Sorry for the poor lighting. I'm a one man show here with the camera. <laughs> so overall, this unit appears to be performing. We haven't tested the AC yet. It really is too cold to really uh, test it, but we'll let them know the year, the tonnage, the types of Freons, if it's installed correctly. And uh, let's go from there. 
So coming out here, you can see that this is a 16 sear unit, a three ton, 2008, and it has 410A Freon, which uh, it matches the upstairs unit. That is really nice, and it's been upgraded. You know, this is an upgraded unit in 2008. So whenever they installed it, they installed a better unit. The only thing that I really wanted would focus on is you can see that this unit is a little out of level. You want to bring this uh, unit up to level because this is designed to run within one inch of level. It can decrease the life expectancy of your HVAC system. Okay, moving on to the panel box. This panel box is a square D panel box. This is actually one of my favorite type of panel boxes. The reason why it's my favorite is the, known to have the least amount of issues. The next thing is, is the square, uh, you want to make sure the ground electrode rod is in place and it can't be easily removed. And then I would remove the screws and let's look inside. Okay, opening up the panel box, one of the first things that we obviously noticed was it wasn't properly labeled. But the thing, first, next thing I noticed is we have two breakers that are switched off. The very first thing we do in a property is we turn on all the power to the structure to make sure the panel box can handle the load. So we got to try to determine maybe where this is going and why it's tripped. The next thing you want to really pay attention to is the the neutrals here. This is an older panel box. It really wasn't required to have one neutral per lug at a time, but you could see that we have a double lug neutral here. We will report on it because there has been known deficiencies of these overheating uh, in the panel box. So we do recommend to have one neutral per lug. Again, because the property is older, are they required to do anything? No, but I can inform them about the known deficiencies. The next thing is you want to make sure all your grounds are tied in correctly and you want to see if the box is properly bonded. The bond screw goes right here. So the, the box is not properly bonded. The next thing you want to do is take a look at all your wiring to make sure it's the proper size, which it is today. And you want to really determine if there's any damaged or overheating wires, which we really do not see that. One more final thing is, is you want to make sure that your main entry feed wires have properly protection. This is just started, but they can come in with another PVC and just kind of cap it just to prevent any you know insects and rodents getting in there one thing to know about being a home inspector you are not a licensed electrician you are a performance home inspector or to know about your home inspector he knows a little bit a lot about a lot he is a, knows enough to be dangerous and to try to help take care of you to make sure your house is not going to burn down yes and a licensed electrician will come in and always find more than a home inspector. That is their trade and that is their job. So you do your best to identify all the major deficiencies, find enough to call an electrician if one is needed. So that being said, I'd say this panel box is performing for whenever it was installed. Does it need an electrician? No. We just wanna to try to figure out what is going on with this breaker. And if there is something wrong with this breaker, then we'll call for an, a licensed electrician to have him come in and figure out why it's tripping or to replace the breaker. All right, let's move on. Well, let me show you some minor things that are almost on every single property. Uh, you don't have to do anything at all really because they're on almost every single one of my home inspection reports. You just wanna be aware that they're gonna be called out. I'm not being nitpicky, I am just informing the client of fully of what they're going to buy. So let's check it out. So one of the first items is on the, the side of the property. You can see that uh, what we're gonna call this is poor to negative drainage. The property is not draining water properly. And this can eventually cause foundation movement. It has not today, but we're gonna recommend to implement a drainage plan. Put them on the structure. You're gonna get this a lot with the termite inspectors. Uh, you wanna remove all foliage off the structure and then you can also see in there the soil is a little high. This is a common call out and you want to remove these items to help prevent termites on your structure. If you, if you like it, you can keep it. All you need to do is treat the area for termites and spot treatments are fairly cheap. One of the other items on the structure is you have some masonite siding and masonite siding is prone to damage. So you want to make sure that these items are painted and sealed, which they are, but you want to inform your client that it is masonite siding. It is an older type of system and as soon as you, it's not painted anymore, it will start to fail. Same thing with the other side of the structure. You can kind of see where the structure, uh, some water is going to hang out in the area. It is rocked. So I just tell them to pay attention over here uh, to 
maybe take action if needed. The next area, area, as you can see, this is a brand new fence and it's already leaning over. We're just going to bring it to their attention so they know that the fence is starting to fail over here. Another item is we inform them that there is some sort of surface drain system in place, which is nice. Uh, there is a surface drain system in place. But the thing is, is we notify them that we cannot see if it is performing, especially if it's raining for that day. So uh, you just want to make sure that your client is aware that there is one in place and they need to keep it clean. So this is... Don't know, we see these uh, heavy blue marks and we were worried about them, so he got his moisture meter to test it out. And it is the only advantage of being a tall inspector. <laughs> I would never be able to do that in a million years. He's testing for moisture. We had discoloration in the infrared camera. So uh, it's looking like it's dry. We had some poor insulation uh, in the attic space. Very common question we get all the time is about the driveways so we'll inform them the driveway is cracked but we also let them know it has no meaning it has no meaning about the structure or anything to do with the structure it just means that your slab is cracked concrete does three things it dries it shrinks and it cracks and i am not worried about this and neither should your clients so let's do a quick recap about this structure so the first off one minute I need you to hit that like and subscribe button. If you like this type of content, please hit that like button and please hit the subscribe button. That's how I know that I'm making great content and to keep moving forward. If you have a specific type of content that you would like, please leave a comment and I will do my best to create it. Home inspection related, of course. So with that being said, quick recap, roof. Roof looks pretty good. All roofs typically need some sort of maintenance repair. This one is a little bit older, but it is performing. Does it need to be replaced? No. So uh, they just need to be fully aware that they need to take action just to prevent any type of water leaks. The second item that we move to is the, the foundation. Foundation hasn't moved really at all. It's a 1970s structure and it's, it's perfectly fine. Moving on to the plumbing, that is the major item that I found on this structure and that is the one that they will do want to take, a, take an action on immediately. If they take action on the plumbing or, or they negotiate some sort of repair or they move forward, they know they need a repair to prevent any type of water damage to the structure. Moving on to the electrical, or not electrical, HVAC system. The HVAC system is a little newer to the property. Of course, it is 12 years old, but it is performing and it is a good looking unit. 410A Freon and it is performing. So it looks good. Just needs a slight little tune up, get it clean uh, for the tenants that are gonna move in. And then the final is the electrical. Electrical looked really good. No real major concerns there. We've determined that that breaker used to go to like a jacuzzi tub or something and there's nothing really wrong with it. It's not even in use. So that's it. So that's uh, Chris with the action. If you have any home inspection questions, please leave a comment below and hit that like and subscribe button and check us out on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.